Hi everybody, Jill here. Welcome to our Sunday vlog. We're starting this one off with a sort of chatty get ready with me. It's going to be pretty quick. I'll probably edit a lot out just so we can get to other things. But I'm getting ready for a possibility of something happening, but I'm not sure if it is yet. But I definitely plan on doing a wig chat today. I need to get my hands in on some of these new wigs that I just received from Wigs by Patty's Pearls. So that's happening for sure today. The other thing is this is Monday. This Sunday is Easter, this coming up Sunday. And my husband, I just don't feel good about leaving him home. I even have to go to Rite Aid for something and I've put it off for two days. I should have went yesterday when my son was here. I realized that my goodness, I have to do Easter dinner shopping because we've decided to celebrate it on Saturday because my son can then, and his girlfriend can be here to celebrate with us because he works on Sunday. So we're gonna do it on Saturday, today's Monday. Normally I wouldn't be panicking except for the fact that m my son works starting today. There is a little possibility, I vaguely remember him saying he might not have to work today. So I am gonna reach out to him and see if that's true and if he can stay here with my husband, with his dad, for a little bit, and he totally will, as long as he's not working. Uh, so I can do my Easter dinner shopping <laughs> because I don't have anything and everybody's coming here, which I'm so excited about, but hopefully that'll happen. And if I can do that, I can swing by Rite Aid and get what I need to get there. Yay. You know, guys, this L'Oreal Infallible has slowly sort of worked its way to what I grab all the time, sort of the top of the list of what I am using. And it finally, I think, has reached that pinnacle number one spot of my absolute favorite foundation currently. I'm choosing this even more than my Anastasia foundation. It's lovely, it's wonderful. Sometimes my Anastasia foundation is just a little too heavy for me you know it's it's beautiful and if you do like sort of that true sort of medium full coverage maybe even goes to a heavier coverage it's lovely but i like more of a skin i don't mind sort of some of my pigmentation coming through it is unless i do something very heavy but i do like something to sort of cover up the unevenness of my complexion when it comes to a little bit of redness I can have and stuff like that. And this does it wonderfully. It's not as heavy as the Anastasia, but it definitely gives me a look that I'm really happy with. And it, it, it continues to look nice through the day, at least for the amount of time that I am wanting it to. So yeah, I think this is legitimately my favorite foundation. And I will probably do an official video on that. So I'm gonna just kind of put it on this. And here we go. But look at that gorgeous finish, love it. So pretty. And I really like this color. The color I have is 202. As a matter of fact, I ordered a, a new one even though I have plenty left in here. I Well, I would say about halfway down. I ordered another one because I'm terrified that I'm not gonna be able to find number 202 or that they're gonna discontinue this. That's just always our fear, right? <laughs> so yeah, I bought another one, so it'll be in the background. And here's something else that I really like. Again, I don't get quite the coverage, but I do love the finish it gives me, and it's this one. This is the L'Oreal True Match Concealer. This is in W1-2. And a little goes a very long way with this. So I'm just gonna put a tiny little bit on my ring finger and that's even too much. So I probably will be able to use this under both my eyes. It is very thin. I mean, very serum-like. And that is kind of the perfect consistency if you have crepiness because you're not gonna get cakiness at all so yes this gives a bit of luminosity it's very brightening what i'm gonna do to kind of help to conceal my hollow sort of darkness right in here is i have a beautiful lovely primer that i like to use on my eyelids it's an eyelid primer that's 
got some color correcting in it. It's kind of peach and it does a really good job at helping to deal with that right there. So that's what we did there. Hold on. I feel like this needs to go this way just a little bit. I also feel like my camera might be a tiny bit crooked. <laughs> oh, hopefully it's not too noticeable. This is a Rare Beauty product. It's the Rare Beauty Eyelid Primer. And I love this. I never really got into eyelid primers all that much. And you want to know why? Because I feel like the ones I was trying were more sort of marketed and created for the younger crowd. They can be drying. I didn't like the way my eye makeup looked, especially, you know, as the day progressed. So I need something a bit hydrating while it's doing its thing. And this one I feel is wonderful for the mature eye tissue. So yes, I'm enjoying using this primer a lot. But this is my favorite sort of brush right now that I like to use for anything around the eyes. I just love how it's angled and it's so, so very soft. It's also really dense, so it, it doesn't interfere with the finish. And it's A506. This is the collab with Angie Hot and Flashy with the BK Beauty line. Good job, Angie. Your brushes are lovely. So I am gonna be working out of my brand new ColourPop Stone Cold Fox palette. On the back, it tells you the colors. Once, uh, and I have recorded a full face look, and this was what I used on the eyes. It's really pretty. Anyway, I'm probably not gonna talk through this look because this isn't a true get ready with me slash not a makeup tutorial. So. So a few of you have asked to give an update on my weight loss and what it was that I did to lose my weight. Well, I used to, and I still do, it's still out there. I just haven't added anything to it. It's been a year since I put a video up on my keto channel. Um, it just became too hard to keep two channels going at especially at the time so I'm not I haven't taken it down because I I don't know I might decide to to redo that and then I also have a couple videos on this channel that are keto related and that I believe I did before I started my separate channel I decided no I need to make a separate channel for that so I did but in, in 2019, I had had it with my weight, the way I felt. Uh, I was sick and tired of losing the same 30 pounds over and over again. Well, at least twice in my lifetime anyway. Because I'm not a big diet person. I, I never had to diet before. And I just don't like the word dieting at all because it sounds very temporary and hard to stick to. <laughs> I had had it and I told myself I'm doing this for my the rest of my life so it has to be sustainable it has to be something that I can do for the rest of my life that's what I've done so it is keto that I do I have not changed anything other than I've allowed myself to eat fruit this year from the beginning I allowed myself to eat some blueberries fruit. there is fruit that I that I won't entertain because the there and even though I like them I I I won't do it, <laughs> but uh, so I have stalled really since I added fruit and I'm okay with that. I know why. I definitely know why fruit other than some berries now and again, you know, that's not that's they're they're loaded with natural sugar and sugar is a big no, no. But it's OK. You know, I'm OK with adding fruit to my diet. My goodness. I am at a point where I'm happy with the way I'm hanging out here in this body. I'm, I'm happy with that. I still could lose another 15 pounds, probably 10, 15 pounds. And someday I, I may decide to do that. And that would require me to really cut down, if not completely eliminate fruit. But the thing is, is I know that the way my body is. So 
fine. I would lose the 10 pounds. Um, and it, but if I were, and I probably would want to start adding some fruit back, I would either gain that back. I probably would gain a good portion of that back. And so, you know, and that's okay. I used to do paleo and that gave me too much freedom. My, my metabolism was just damaged way too much. I went to a doctor who is the one who sort of educated me on keto because she saw the fact that I just wasn't losing anything. We weren't seeing a big enough change in sort of my inflammatory markers because that's another huge, huge, gigantic reason that I decided to do the keto is to lower the inflammation in my body because I have fibromyalgia. I have chronic fatigue syndrome. My, my metabolism is very, very damaged because I ate poorly for so many years. So it's not about just cutting out the carbs. You can go on a very low carb diet, but still eat a lot of crap. You know, if it's doesn't have a lot of carbs, if it's processed or whatever, it's like, oh, then that keeps me at my carb count for the day. That wasn't my motivation is just to do a low carb diet. I do allow certain crappy things that I eat. Like for instance, there for a while I made my own mayonnaise and cut out, you know, the crappy best foods mayonnaise and whatnot. I hated it. I hated it. And I knew I wouldn't be able to sustain it. And occasionally, you know, I like to use my best foods mayonnaise. And so I have my best foods and I'm fine with that. So there are a few things that I am quite stubborn about. I will say that in the beginning, the first six months, especially, I didn't have anything like that. You know, I barely even had a few frozen I think I used to do a quarter cup of frozen blueberries. I would allow myself that every day. I was very strict the first six months. I really monitored my ketone levels. I never counted my mac my macros though. I never counted my carbs. I never, I mean, I did sort of in my head in a way, you know, it's because I, my doctor really wants me to keep my carbs under 30. And now that I have fruit, definitely not, which, which is why I, you know, I've stalled. Uh, I don't gain the weight maybe by two or three pounds every now and then. But that's why I've stalled because I've allowed my carb count to get up a little too high. But I refuse to count anything. I don't do my macros. I don't record what I eat on paper. I don't record any of that. In the beginning, I kept track of how often I was in ketosis because that's really important, I think, when you do start. And, it, and, it, and what it does is it really sort of helps you to become more intuitive down the way you know and then you're like yes this is how i'm feeling and that means i've allowed my ketones to get way too high i've lost my appetite i feel crappy because i can actually fall in ketosis really easily which is great but then then i also can get too high my ketones can go a little too high not dangerous high just within me and that's where i have to actually keep my ketones pretty low and maybe 1.2 1.3 but when i start getting in the threes and the fours and the fives which yes i can get up there uh, then i start feeling icky so after a while you can stop actually testing because you know how you're feeling um, so it is important i think to test those ketones so you know also, what foods throw you out of ketosis? And uh, in the beginning, you want to stay in ketosis as much as you can. As time goes by, your metabolism gets healthier. You are in and out of ketosis all the time. All the time. You may be out, then you may be, go in. And your body is able to sort of flip-flop and utilize the fuel from different, it could be fuel from the carbs that you have in your diet, or it could be the ketones that are fueling you. Of course, ketones are more efficient, believe it or not. You don't, you don't need carbs for energy. And I think that's a huge misunderstanding. But now that it's, you know, 2022, and I started in 2019, I've lost 45 pounds and it will come down a few pounds. It'll go up a few pounds. You know, it sort of floats around there. And so I would like to lose about 55 pounds total, maybe 60. I don't know. My body is not what it used to be. I don't think I would look very great if I lost 15 more pounds, but 10, I think I'd be happy at 10. 
So yes, I'm still doing this for life. I try to eat as clean as I can. Again, for me, it's not, nor has it ever been, about just low carbs. Um, It's about cleaning up my diet, eating whole healthy foods, cooking things myself, not eating out. My goodness, I haven't been to a fast food place in years. Um, Wow. First of all, I'm just loving this thing going on here that I'm doing. These are colors that I haven't used yet. I basically, guys, have used this whole, this is this is the line that I've dipped into for this look. Just everything here on the side. Now, when I say, you know, like, I'm gonna let this in my diet, I'm stubborn, I'm not giving it up. Well, you have to be reasonable with that. You know, I'm not gonna eat potatoes, I don't eat rice, I don't eat breads, I don't have grains like that. I don't allow full on sugar in my diet. I don't allow obvious things that are gonna screw me up and my metabolism and all of that. So I've worked hard to keep those things out. I do allow them for the holidays, for instance, Easter, totally gonna have my stuffing and gravy. And you know, I might have something for dessert. I don't know what we're gonna have for dessert. I don't know, usually my daughter brings this homemade, she handpicks the apples most of the time. Um, it's this apple cobbler that she puts to, it's gorgeous. It's beautiful. It's delicious. It's a paleo recipe. So it's very clean, not a lot of sugar. I love it. It is my biggest dessert sort of cheat, if you call it that. And it's not even that bad if I were to choose, you know, something else that isn't so clean and homemade and all of that. But yes, I allow myself all of that for Easter, Thanksgiving, and Christmas. And then it goes away and I'm back to eating like I do. So yeah, it's like you can justify anything. It's like, oh, I ate so good this week. I'm totally gonna have this slice of pizza. Or no, I'm gonna have some French fries or I'm gonna have the potatoes with the roast. You do have to put your foot down. You have to be psychologically ready to be fed up enough to change the way you eat. And I never feel deprived. I I love the food that I eat. I really do. There's stuff that I like better than others, but I don't feel like I'm missing out on anything. Honestly, I do not. And that is what makes it so sustainable for me is that I don't feel like I'm giving up to the point where I am depressed because I hate and the way I eat, you know, because we, Food is a form of celebration for this, for us in this culture, I think, you know, when we celebrate, it's about, you know, we go out and we eat and I'm not a drinker. I don't drink. So that's never, that's not a problem for me, but food, you know, I mean, look at the holidays, you know, and that's, that's why I allow myself that. Plus the stuffing that I make is the stuffing that my mom made and her, uh, my dad's mom made, she learned it from her. So it's very nostalgic, it's important. It does feed into our family history and I am not gonna deprive myself of that. Plus I enjoy making it. It's just just so I I know, I'm aware, that's why I haven't lost any extra weight for a while because I added fruit. That is fructose. And it will kick me out of ketosis. But on the days that I'm not eating it, three or four days and I've I'm just you know not no fructose is coming into my diet I'll go back into ketosis again and that's usually when you know I'll drop some water weight and my face will thin out and my eyes look a little different because carbs definitely bloat you and totally see it in my face usually this is the one guys in the same row it's the very first one in case you're wondering what this is You do not have to give up your sparkle, guys. Don't let anybody tell you different. If you like your sparkles, you wear your sparkles. I don't care if it emphasizes your crepiness to high heaven. You love it, you wear it, you rock it. I need to come out with a t-shirt that says that. <laughs> okay, um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go in with this. I think this is so pretty. This is that colorful. This is in purple. I think this is the purple one. I am going to kind of take it here. All right.
right, I am done. So very first thing I have to do actually, now that I've done my eye makeup, I gotta put my glasses on. I could wear contacts, but I like to reserve wearing my contacts if I'm actually gonna be driving out and about, especially if it's sunny, that way I can wear sunglasses. Um, I definitely see better, you know, with my glasses, it, but they're, they're good for driving. So I gotta put my glasses on and now you can't see my makeup. All right, well, I am off to, it is actually 3.14. Uh, and I'm off to the post office. And then I have to go shopping for Easter dinner and a few other random items because we're gonna celebrate Easter on Saturday. So my son and his girlfriend can be there because my son works on Sundays and they don't get Easter off, so. <laughs> so. I also need to go buy Rite Aid. I have to remember to do that. So I need to do post office and then I'll do grocery shopping. And then I'm trying to think logistically what would make the most sense. And then I'll go to Rite Aid. I'll figure it out. However, my son and I, and I, I dang it, I had bought a new TV a big one at Costco online when we, well, within a couple months after we moved into our house. Well, with, I would say it's been maybe a few weeks now, a couple, three weeks maybe at the most. The sound has decided not to sync with, you know, the TV isn't syncing the sound correctly. So there is like an easy fix and you go into the menu and there's a little sinking bar and you slide it to, tr to line it all up. It doesn't work. It doesn't do anything. You can slide it all the way this way, nothing. So I Googled it and did every single thing that anyone has ever tried. I mean, I did it all. I did get it through Costco so they have a concierge free thing. I thought about calling them but to be honest I don't know what it is they do because I did everything but I just got fed up basically it's coming to actually it was only about a month after we moved in when I got the TV because you have 90 days to take it back pretty much no questions asked at Costco and I'm coming to the end at the end of this month will be 90 days so it was the end of January when I got it so didn't have the original box, which is so funny because we always keep forever, it seems like. I just broke down the box and took it to the recycling center of the TV I have now in my room, which is also huge, but it's working pretty dang good still. And we bought that thing in, geez, I want to say 2010, maybe 2012 or something. And I just broke that box down. So when I bought this one, I let it run for a few, you know, weeks and it's like, oh, it's working fine. Broke the box down. So of course I have to take it back without the box, but it was no problem. Costco is so good about the returns, you know? I called them first though and said, hey, I don't have the box for this. Oh, that's all right. You just bring back everything that came with it. And so I'm like, okay. So that's what me and my son Shane did a little earlier today about one o'clock or 12 um, and then he had to do a few errands and he came back so he can kind of hang out with my husband while I go and do this stuff you know I just adore grocery shopping oh how I adore it I'm trying to tell myself more positive things about it <laughs> uh, uh, god it's not working so it has been several hours so I am not fresh looking at the moment it has been several hours since I have gotten myself ready but that's just the way it is I did not freshen up before I left I just want to get this stuff over with there is one more thing I want to squeeze into this vlog this time and that is that and I had already recorded it but for some reason it got deleted which does I can see where that may happen more if I'm not careful because I bring stuff on my phone over into my editing software on my laptop well I think I may have actually 
deleted it from my phone before I was able to do that. But anyway, it's not a huge deal. It's just, I finally received those wig products that I ordered for myself to try some of these out. One is a, I got two different, well, technically, I want to say three different treatments, like detanglers. Two of them are like detangler reviving treatments, and one is more of like a silicone-based restore, restorative sort of tr uh, product. So I want to use those for a while to decide if I like them or if there's one that's spectacular and just keep you in the loop on that. I did get two different hairsprays that I've never used, so I'm trying those out. And one, two, actually maybe three. And then that's about it. So quite a few products actually for synthetic wigs. So um, I just wanted to show you them in this vlog. I have to yeah. <coughs> 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 So I wanted to just show you the ones that I, that I got, let you know what it is that I'm going to be testing out for a while. Hopefully I've hit on something that I love for our wigs that I can share with you. So I'm hoping to get that in this one. Whenever I do sort of the get ready with me's, it really does take up a, even though I edit it like crazy. Oh, I hate that. Um, <laughs> It takes up a lot of the vlog, so, you know, there's going to be a lot of times when I just decide I probably won't do that, but I felt like doing it in this one, so. All right, there's probably nothing left to jabber about, so I'm going to let you guys go, get home, see if I can get my son to unload the car for me, and I'm going to put all that stuff away. And I will meet you back probably in my recording room next. All right. Thanks for coming along with me. Hi, everybody. So different day. <laughs> this is uh, the following day. I did not get a chance to get back with you guys yesterday. I also didn't have an opportunity actually to record any sort of wig chat. So I'm starting my week behind. It's already Tuesday. Uh, didn't get really much chance to sit here in front of the camera in any capacity. We did have a doctor's appointment. We had to travel north for that. Thank goodness it wasn't one of those that are really far away. About an hour, I would say, because of the traffic and whatnot. Um, so bizarre, the weather. It's so bipolar this month. It is just, the weather is all over the place. We left the house it was sunny, chilly, but sunny, about 15 minutes down the road in the middle of a snowstorm. I mean, it really snowed. Everybody slows down on the freeway. It was so bizarre. It did It did hail today here before it got sunny. Um, and then in the morning I woke up and it was kind of snowing here and then it got sunny. It has just been like that all month. All right, so I told you guys that to finish up this vlog, I wanted to share with you the products that I purchased. I bought just pretty much anything that I had not used that interests me anyway. And you can get all of these on wigsbypattiespearls.com. I will put the link though to every single one of them down below. So obviously the goal here, you know, is to find some products that I love for my synthetic wigs. Okay, so let's start with the hairsprays, the new ones that I got. Now, if you have any of these and you have any feedback to share with me, please do let me know. The first one is this one here. This is by Hair You Wear. It's called Control. It is an aerosol hairspray that you can use on your hair pieces. There's nothing on here that says you cannot use it on synthetics. Usually if you can't, it'll just say human hair only, something like that. So this is a great sort of alternative to crossing over and using, you know, some aerosol hairspray that's not meant to be used on synthetic fibers. So more for just everyday human hair, you know. So I, I love that. Now I have used this a couple times and it really does work like an aerosol. 
but I need to use it some more, you know, to just kind of give you a little more feedback. So looking forward to sort of trying that out. So the next one that I got, which I found to be so interesting, not seen this. This is the, it's called Trust Tech and it's wig wax spray. This is considered sort of a finishing spray. So according to the directions, you style your hair the way you want it and then you use this to lock it and to finalize what you did. I have used this and I have to say I'm not sure yet because <clears throat> what I'm going to have to experiment with it a little bit more. However, I saw more of sort of a helmet head sort of finish. Um, just, I don't know. I just don't know about this yet. Again, I just got these not too long back and I'm in the process. If they're all in their testing phase with me. I just kind of, again, wanted to share with you what I'm testing. So I am always looking for a detangler that doesn't gum up my wigs and actually does a really great job at detangling. And I've not, I've not found one yet, so I gave up. And now I'm on the hunt again. But I do think it's a piece of the puzzle when it comes to the care of your wigs that it's really important to find a good one. And I am trying to find one that is made specifically for our wigs. So. This is by Beauty Mark, and I do like Beauty Mark, and this is called Smooth Detangler. This is for synthetic hair. Just, and you gotta use these sparingly. Same with any sort of treatment, silicone-based kind of smooth treatment thing. You really have to go very lightly with them. If you do a little too much, they do gum up your wigs and then you're gonna have to wash them. <laughs> now, when it comes to sort of revitalizing treatments for these synthetic fibers, I have three here that I am going to be trying. I have not tried any of them yet. One is the Renew and Repair. This is a Glosser Spray by Envy. I'm gonna be trying this out. Also, we have a Shine sort of number four. This is within the John Renault line. This is called Fiber Love Wig Luster. It's a treatment, again, for your synthetic fibers. And then finally, this finally came in the mail today. It took a little bit to get here. This is by Aesthetica. It is the Revitalize and Shine Wig Mist. It adds weightless moisture, yes please, and shine. So I don't know, this is the one I think I am really excited about. I like the fact that if it is truly weightless, it's not gonna sort of weigh down and gum up those fibers. So I, I'm super excited to try this one. I think more than anything. And uh, this is, now this is something, these these are all something that yes, something like this, you could sort of spray it before you're getting ready to wash it. But I'm looking for the interim. I put off washing my wigs for as long as I possibly can and maybe even a little too long, but I just do. I think washing too often will definitely shorten the life of your wig. This is my opinion. Many of you may feel different, that's okay. But I would like to be able to use these types of products to revitalize and um, sort of bring back some life to the, you know, just sort of coddle and baby those, especially those HD fibers. And when they start getting very dry and sort of brittle and you can tell they're breaking down, I would like to be able to see if something like this and this or this, obviously I'm not gonna use all three of these, will give me back a little bit of life before you know it's time to wash and, and condition them. And so anyway, guys, um, oh, also, I sorry, I didn't mean to wake you up there. Um, I bought another one of these. I secure my wigs with the It Stays. I definitely prefer this over a wig grip any day. That's how I have this on today. I've had it on all day. I did refresh my makeup before I came on. Didn't do a whole lot actually with my hair and I did not have a hood. It was snowing on this. It was raining on this, not pouring rain, but it was snowing pretty good when I was helping my husband get into the car from our appointment. He had a hood. I didn't, 
And I don't know what I was thinking, knowing that the weather has been all over the place. So yeah, this, this actually got a good amount of moisture, to say the least, on it. And uh, I haven't really combed through it. I know in the car, because it was quite, quite wet, actually. So when we're driving home, I got the heater on, you know, and I just sort of didn't touch it for the longest time. And then I kind of was doing this just to kind of get it off, you know, off itself. And, and that's where I left it. And I haven't done anything with it since. It's wonderful being a wig wearer. I'm telling you, if this were my own hair, it would be flattened to my head in 2.5 seconds with any moisture and with no help to restore it and make it look better for the rest of the day. Uh-uh, not going to happen. <laughs> okay, so you know what? I think we're going to have to sign off for today's vlog. Thank you so much for hanging out with me again. These are so fun for me to do. It's just sort of a nice change of pace. I All right. I'm going to sign off then, and I will see you very soon in my next video. Bye-bye. I knew I was going to leave you. I just finished the wig chat for this. It's actually probably around 8 something. I have a clock right here, actually. Oh, yeah. It's around 8.20 at night. So I went ahead and did a wig chat. I wasn't planning on doing that, but I thought, no. You know, I'm feeling it. I really want to do one. But if you are watching this and it's a Sunday and you did not catch this, it already has hit my channel because I definitely made sure that it was done and up this last week. So if you haven't caught the wig chat on this one, you will find it down in the description box. There'll be a link and you may even see it at the very end of this video.